guys, Aftershow Reacts here, and today I'm going to be reacting to some more Marvel's Agent Carter. This is Season 1, Episode 4. Uh, I don't even want to try and pronounce what the episode title is, because that's just some crazy shit. Yeah, let's get into it. You'll get your package when we get our money. You think the deal's gonna go sour? Not with you, me, and Jimmy standing guard. One grand bills? You ever even seen these? I can assure you that is legal tender. And far easier to transport than 50,000 singles. Would believe you if we saw an extra hundred of them. That was not the agreed upon amount. Mr. Mink does not smuggle goods into this country for free, Mr. Jarvis. Now, the inherent value of any commodity or service should really... Oh, have... yeah, don't do that. You were saying? 50,000 American dollars. That was our understanding. 50 was for the delivery. The extra hundreds for us to keep our traps shut. And I got three guys outside that agree with me. Who's in there? I, I'm sorry, but I, I can't agree to such, pardon my language, extortion. It's not extortion. There's a shakedown. You didn't even you pronounce it right. Money? You said extortion. Well, he can hand me the money. I have a further 50,000 in here. It's all I have. Take it or leave it. You drive hard bargain, Mr. Jarvis. My favorite foreigners. Did Mr. Mink have his minions blackmail you? Indeed, sir. You certainly know how to pick your partners. Well, Mr. Mink is a greedy black market smuggler, sure. But he got me back into the country. And he's predictable in his greed. I like predictable. And I like greedy. <gasps> and I was so close to running the table. The residence is only a block away. What's the matter? See that man waiting for the bus? That's Agent Yauk. You've seen that sedan pop with the fire hydrant? That is Agent Henry. Make a left. How many people who know about that penthouse besides me and Jarvis, Alana Turner, Jane Russell... You do realize that my work colleague, Ray Krasminski, was killed while you were out gallivanting? I was not gallivanting. Yes, it's our blame to you, and they're out for blood. So where can I hide? God help me. Take a right up ahead. I hope you're not taking him to your place, because no man above the second floor, or first floor or something. Ah, the Griffith. How's Miriam? Get in. What? I hate small spaces. What if the chain snaps and I fall my death? Don't worry, I'll never reveal that how the dead worry. body is lying rotting in the bottom of a dumbwaiter shaft. Like if Miriam finds us, we'd be much more comfortable in an electric chair. Just for the record, I did not <sighs> Do you know how many intruders I have caught inside that very dumb waiter attempting to soil the honor of some young lady? I am certain that many a woman owes her virtue to your watchful eye. There are always the rebellious. Official report on the Battle of Funau. Great. Only thing missing are words. Good old U.S. Army intelligence for you. Redacted by the General John McGinnis. Luck would have it. Died a month ago. What the lab rats say about your magic typewriter? They're claiming it sends signals back and forth. To where we don't know yet. Maybe it's time we send a message to our enemies. I got another way of talking to our enemies. Colonel Ernst Mueller. He's due to be executed in two days. For murder, extermination, enslavement, deportation. If I leave now, I might just make it in time. Chief, you're really gonna rely on the word of a Nazi? Son. I'd let Garen give me a hickey if he'd get me to the bottom of this. Until I get back, you're in charge. Good luck, Chief. Uh-oh. Thank you, Chief. Are you familiar with the id and the ego? Are they children's characters? Oh, good. It is unbecoming for a lady to read Freud, but what you must understand is that until a certain age, you do not know how to govern your own impulses, and that leaves me to defend young women from compulsion. Understood. It's none this of your country. business. Your laundry. Mm. 
Good night, Miss Fry. Howard! <laughs> oh, yes? You just woke me. Uh, not to worry. This is my cousin Peggy. <clears throat> Peggy, Lorraine. <laughs> Come on, Peg. We got family business to discuss. See ya. I'm bound for Rio in three days. Before I depart, I need to know which of my inventions you've recovered. Why? Well, if I know what the SSR has obtained, I can determine how many are still on the black market. Now, Chief Dooley's gone to break a lead in the Stark case, and while he's gone, I'm in charge. And while I'm in charge, none of you will be resting. So, pick up your phones, make kissy noises to your wives because we're not going home until we start cracking heads. The anonymous call that led to the Stark weapons? I'm gonna see if I can pull a print off the phone that rang it in. It was a public phone. The only thing you'll pull is a bacterial infection. Hey, Sousa, where do you think you're going? To do some real police work, oh man of action. Hey, Sousa, you know, now that Krasminski's dead, that makes you our biggest yo-yo. Marge, start taking the lunch orders. How goes the research on the stock invention? Uh, oh. I got it, I got it. Oh, it's been a bit of a challenge. Do you see this switch? Every time that I, I push this switch, I get a shock that runs right up my arm and into my skull. But do you see any other switch? I do not. It melted the glasses right off of my face. Mm. Now, is that the intended purpose? I don't know. Mm. But Howard Stark is either an ignoramus or a genius. Most likely both. <laughs> Either of you hear the commotion down by the wharf the other night? By the boat called the Heartbreak? Depends. You got a nickel? Thanks. Didn't say a thing. I camped down on 14th Street. Frank here, though, you've been in what? About a month, right? Keep your money. I don't play games with police. I just said I ain't got no business with Johnny Law. There must be some kind of... Darn it, Victor! Well, I win this hand, I guess. Mr. Mink, we were hoodwinked. Jarvis, he didn't come by himself. He brought a girl and, and five guys. Or, or six. Yeah, it's six or seven guys. They, they beat the snot out of us, and there was nothing we could do. That, that's the truth, Mr. Mink. You are lying. Oh, my God. What was the woman's name? I heard Stark call her Peggy. No one crosses me. Oh! You want them dead? I'll kill Stark and Peggy. No, I'll take care of it. Oh! Howard! Oh, for God's sake. Where are you now? You're back. Good. <laughs> uh, you know Helen? <laughs> Helen, my cousin Peggy. You are disgusting. Agent Souza found Howard Stark. <laughs> we can all rest now. Hey! Hey! No wonder we couldn't you. find him. He looks rough. Don't be a jerk. Victor's great. Wait, Susa. You may have seen something at the wall. Oh, I'm really conflicted because he's Lucas. Thing that man uh -huh. is the bottom of the bottle. Great job. I walk into this diner and everybody starts clapping. And I look around at first, confused, and then I realize, oh, they're clapping for me in my dress uniform because I served and came back alive like you. You and me ain't nothing alike. And then I'm working on my meal. I look up, I see another GI walking. So I put down my fork, put down my knife, get ready to clap. And nobody else does a thing. That's when I realize they weren't clapping for me. They are clapping for this. And this, clapping because I make them feel guilty. And they want to feel good. You think because I'm wearing a suit and I got a clean shape, we're different? We're not. We're both people nobody cares about. No one clapped when I came home. One guy was sleeping with my wife. Another took my job at the mill. We all got sad stories. I still don't talk to cops, even pathetic ones. How dare you call 
victim Clap. of the day. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Send him packing and start looking for Stark like everybody else. I'm telling you, he's a witness. Think about it. If he didn't see something, he'd say so. He saw something. Uh-oh.